Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In this video, I'm going to uh, talk about ocean acidification. Ocean acidification is threatening the entire food chain. In the last uh, three or four decades, the pH of the open ocean at the surface has decreased from about 8.2 to about 8.05. Because the pH scale is a logarithmic scale, that represents an increase in ocean acidity at the surface of about 30%. When the pH drops to about that 7.8, 7.9 number, then a lot of the creatures that have calcium in their backbones, in their shells, um, and this includes uh, clams and oysters and um, uh, some uh, things, you know, even thing, even, even, like numerous sea creatures, including um, a lot of phytoplankton. Um, there's uh, forams, which is short for foraminiferous. Um, those have calcium backbones in their shells as opposed to the diatoms that are based on silica. So the diatoms that are based on silicon dioxide in their backbone, which is essentially glass, will fare better um, than the um, coccolithopores um, and forams and things. So, so basically, um, the it, also the warming ocean is becoming more stratified, so there's less nutrients upwelling, and you need sunlight, CO2, water, and nutrients, um, which you all have at the surface when the sun is shining. But when the ocean is acidified, it, when the ocean is acidified, then it, it harms that phytoplankton, and also there's less nutrients uh, upwelling, so you have less phytoplankton to begin with. So let me get the light. Okay, so basically, I'll start with the Arctic report card. Um, I've done a number of previous videos on this. This is the update for 2016, which just came out in early December 2016. Um, so the section on ocean acidification, um, if you go to the report and just go down on the menus, the ocean acidification is there. Ocean acidification is often considered the evil twin of climate change. You know, as bad as climate change is in the atmosphere affecting us, the acidification of the ocean is a huge problem. It can only be addressed by uh, negative emissions, if you like, is a phrase you might hear a lot of, which is CDR is another term, carbon dioxide removal from the atmosphere. Um, and that can include biomimicry, which is, you know, letting, you know, trying to develop technologies to remove CO2 from the atmosphere, as trees do, at least, you know, and I mean, we, we got to stop cutting down forests and our forests are stressed by temperatures, you know, heat waves, and droughts and things. Um, this is stressing the boreal forest, which is a huge sink for carbon. The phytoplankton in the ocean has reduced, um, and that's a huge carbon sink. The biological pump, if you like, is reduced. The oceans are warmer, so they're less able to um, produce, you know, support the phytoplankton. Uh, we're getting more and more carbon coming out of the Earth's systems um, on top of our global emissions. So, um, so let's talk about ocean acidification, specifically in the Arctic and also, you know, overall. So in the Arctic, it's disproportionately prone to ocean acidification compared to the rest of the ocean because of basically cold water in the Arctic. So you lose the sea ice, you get the cold water, the cold water is able to absorb more gases. You know, it's sort of unusual. When you heat up water, it can absorb more, it can dissolve more salt. It can dissolve more substances, more solid substances, like salts, for example. But when, but less, it can hold less dissolved gases, including CO2. You know, heat up a soda and you see all the CO2 bubbling out of it. So the colder the soda is, the more CO2 it can hold. It's the opposite to um, dissolving solid materials. So the solubility 
um, of gases decreases with warmer oceans, so it can absorb um, more CO2, um, sorry, less CO2, but in the Arctic, the water is very cold, so the, the amount of CO2 it can be, that can be dissolved is greater, so therefore the ocean acidity is greater in the colder water, so that drop that I talked about is a global average, but it can be very, very severe in the Arctic. In fact, vast regions of the Arctic, even with the existing climate models, which we know are conservative, um, show that the pH of the parts of the Arctic will drop to that 7.8, 7.9 uh, amount by 2050, or you know, probably earlier, but they say 2050, and this will really disrupt the food chain there. Um, the other thing that's important is, um, and there's no diagrams here, I'll, there's just, um, but basically the length of the food chain in the Arctic is smaller. It's, it's not as extensive. There's less species in the Arctic because the environment's colder. Um, so therefore the marine life in the Arctic is much more sensitive to um, disruption, it's much more vulnerable to disruption than a longer um, trophic, wet, trophic food chain. Um, so let's have a look at um, what is going on with images. I'm a big believer of images, you know, pictures a thousand words. So just Google, go to Google, Google, Google images, and then do a search for ocean acidification Arctic. And this is what you come up with. So let's have a look at some of these images. So basically, um, this is the shell of a creature as you subject it to higher and higher acidity or lower and lower pH. And eventually, you get to numbers 7.8, 7.9. The shell just cannot form. The organism either dwarf, modif um, move, you know, becomes something else changes or just dies off and is replaced by something else. Um, there's many images of the cycle. Essentially CO2 from the atmosphere is absorbed in the ocean and it reacts with the carbonates. The, the CO2 you know, reacts with the water molecules, becomes car hydrogen uh, between carbonates, which are weak acids. So they acidify the ocean. These react with calcium form precipitates that fall to the ocean floor, or the precipitated, depending on the depth, the precipitated um, cal um, calcites, um, calcium molecules um, dissociate and then produce, uh, you know, they just can't buffer the acidity of the ocean, and then the acidity rises rapidly in the ocean. This is um, showing, this is Mauna Loa, so Hawaii, um, this is showing the CO2 level rising. As it's rising, this is dissolved CO2, also rising at the same rate. And this is the pH level dropping. So the pH scale is here. So this is going 8.10. Let's just uh, click on this. 8.1 down to um, 8.07 you know, or something. Um, just from 1990 to present day. Um, there's all kinds of different um, papers. You can get PowerPoint presentations on ocean acidification in the Arctic, um, things like that. Um, I'm going to talk about this Arctic Ocean Acidification 2013 overview, you know, 100 odd page document. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, let's look at some more pictures. Um, and uh, there's a couple in particular that I want to highlight if I get to them. Uh, here we go. Let's, uh, um, so the polar waters of Arctic and Southern Oceans are, um, have many protected and endangered marine mammals. CO2 dissolves more readily in cold water, acidifying the waters of polar regions faster than in lower latitudes. If CO2 continues to increase, by the year 2050, the surface waters of Southern Ocean will become corrosive to some types of carbonate structures. Also, it harmed coral reefs, which are loaded, which the reef building corals are calcium based. Um, so presentation there, 
and I'll just show you a few more images here. Um, this is in the North Pacific Ocean. Um, so what you see is, um, you see, this is the atmospheric CO2 rise from 1960 to present day. This is the seawater rise, um, the dissolved CO2, and this is the ocean acidity. In this case, um, it's so from 19, you know, I don't know why the data series uh, ended here. I mean, it, they all end from a while ago. Um, you know, we need to, this is some more data um, going more current. Um, like I said, the open ocean, typically over the last three decades or so, um, 8.1 or so to 8.05. This is over a shorter time scale again. Um, more images. Um, I can't find any others that I want to show you. Just this guy here, the CO2 increases in the atmosphere, partial pressure of CO2, uh, uh, increase, partial pressure of CO2 in surface seawater also increases, lowering the acidity. Um, okay, so there's loads of information that you can find there. Now let's have a bit more detail at look at this AMAP um, assessment. So 2013, they need to update it because ocean acidity is such an important thing. Um, this is the assessment from that was put together in a you know Oslo 2013 conference. Now these guys do assessments. So it, what's more recent? Well in 2015 radioactivity in the Arctic. Um, these are all publicly available. The most recent one is the Arctic freshwater system. So they're mostly rivers putting water into the Arctic Ocean. Hopefully they talk about the fresh water from the ice melt, I'm not sure. Health effects of people living up there and black carbon. So from this assessment of black carbon and ozone, there are regulations on cars in northern countries and an attempt to reduce black carbon, but forest fires are a big source of the, of the problem. So let's close that and let's open the Adobe. So this is the AMAP assessment on Arctic Ocean acidification in 2013. So you just really want the diagrams, you know, just look at the pictures and try to figure out what's going on. So let's have a look. Uh, here with the wrong one. Okay, so where are the diagrams? We'll just scan down, you know, you like read the, I tell my students, um, just read the preface or the abstract, read the conclusions, which are basically a rewording of the abstract, and also read the, you know, the introduction if you want, but just look at the figures. So this shows the pH of various substances going from baking soda, pH 14, very strong, um, ac very strong basic um, caustic um, substance, battery acid over here, coffee's low, a lot of things are low, human blood um, is just above 7.7, 7. seawater 8.1, open ocean, um, and you know human blood and seawater, very similar, that's not by accident of course, it's by evolution, 7 is neutral, um, it just measures the hydrogen ions um, in, in the um, in the in the in the water, the more there are, the more acidic you are. This shows the Arctic ice here. Shows the CO two from the atmosphere getting dissolved in the water, forming the carbonic acid, and then the you get this acid um, base uh, reaction with the calcium ions in the water. You get calcium carbonate formed, which sinks to the bottom, and so on, and you get this cycle occurring. Um, this shows. Okay, this shows from 1960 to present day. The CO2 rise, the CO2 in the water rise, and the, um, from 1990 to almost present day, you know, 8.1 of the open ocean to where we are now, we're very close to 8.05, which is that 30% increase in acidity when you convert it over to pH. And I'm going to have to uh, do a second video on this topic. Thank you.